where we're going to talk about alopecia. Alopecia. Alopecia is the right pronunciation. And we want to understand how does this manifest? How is it treated? What is all about it? Um, and then for most people, like we shared with Val, came to know about it when uh, a celebrity, uh, you know, got, uh, and that's Will Smith's wife, um, who was attacked because of her condition with alopecia but today we want to understand it does it affect us even as africans as kenyans does it affect you as a person and for this particular discussion i am joined by an expert and uh, this is john Mburu, who's a certified trichologist trichologist is a specialist that deals with alopecia karibu sana yeah, Dr. thank you so much it's my pleasure to be with you this morning mm -hmm. and also for our listeners it is a pleasure for us to be uh, for us to have an opportunity to share the much that you are specialized in mm -hmm. of which it touches many people so when you pass the information it will be beneficial absolutely absolutely yeah. let's start mm -hmm. by you telling us what's explaining um the simplest form what is alopecia mm -hmm. all right alopecia is a technical term but in a simple term it stands for hair loss Hair loss. Yeah, yeah, hair loss. So mm -hmm. uh, the moment you start talking about hair loss, mm -hmm. technically you're, you're referring to alopecia. So it means if you had hair at a particular point of the body mm -hmm. and then you have lost the hair for, for any reason whatsoever mm -hmm. and the hair is no longer there, then you have alopecia. Okay. So you have hair loss. So it's hair loss and it's not, it's not specifically on the, our head hair, our hair hair. Because mm. some people are usually hair. Yes. So even when they experience hair loss, that's, it yes. could be alopecia. Yes, yeah, you have lost the hair. Okay. So the moment you have lost the hair where you're supposed to have it, you have hair loss. But you see, on the head, it is more conspicuous because everyone can see it. Mm. And that's why we always talk about the head because the head is the most visible part where you have hair. Mm -hmm. And the head is, is God intended the hair to have hair. And actually, that's why you have the longest hair and the strongest hair in the body is on the head. Yeah. So when you lose it, everyone is like, you don't have it. Well, so everyone notice. can see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and when you have alopecia, does it affect a specific <coughs> area like the head? Or what, once it comes, it affects um, the whole body? All. Oh, actually, we have, we have so many different types of, uh, of hair losses or mm -hmm. alopecia. So depending on, but the majority of them, of course, will go to the scalp. That mm -hmm. is the head, because predominantly that's where we have the most active cells that makes the hair. Mm -hmm. So it makes it more prone to any challenge when it comes. At the same time, you should remember the hair is one of the fastest growing parts of the body. So in case of any mishap in the body, it is the first. So it is like an SI unit when something is going wrong mm -hmm. in the body. So it means. If a problem is coming, it is likely to start with the hair on the head. Really? But also, at the same time, you can lose the hair on the head, then you end up losing the hair on the, in the entire body, uh -huh. from the head to the toe. Okay. But not to all hair losses, but you have specifics. And that's why when you go for consultation and examination, then you're able to know exactly which hair loss you have, and then you're given all the bits about mm -hmm. it. That is the cause, you know, what's happening, the type of damage. Then that determines now the treatment that you're going to get. Ah, yes, okay. Yes. There are people who usually um, don't have, uh, you know, when you get to puberty, you usually get hair under the armpits, yep. you know. There are people who don't have hair under the armpits. Is yes. it alopecia? No, no. That, that means you're supposed to grow hair, you have not grown hair. So that is most likely, because during puberty, that's when hormones, growth hormones, that, that's when they kick in. Mm -hmm. And for this case, androgen hormones, because they are, they, are, they are very much involved when it comes to body development. And for this case, also the hair. And that's why sometimes uh, there's something intriguing that scientists are still trying to find out because the same hormone that makes the hair grow and the body to change for you to grow more hairs in the body, it is still the same hormone that makes some people go bald. So the same, okay. same one, ESS, mm -hmm. the same androgen hormone. So if it doesn't kick the way it's supposed to kick, then mm. there's some things that won't work right. For yeah. example, there are people who delay, men who delay in getting yes, hairs. True. The voices are still soft, you mm -hmm. know. During puberty, puberty, the voice is supposed to go deeper. Yeah. Get, eh? mm -hmm. So as the hairs are growing, 
some other bodily changes are supposed to accompany to accompany that. So we also expect the hair to mature because hair matures during puberty. So mm -hmm. by the time you are 18, 20 years, the hair is fully matured. At the same time, if you have any influence that is related now to genes and your family and your hormones, that's the time it starts. And that's why in your family, if you have baldness, then after it's you're 18, to... 16, from 16, 18 around there, mm. you start balding. Okay. If it is in your family. Okay. Yes. So our bodies are very much regulated by hormones. So we also have hair losses that are also uh, mm -hmm. also ridden by the same same hormones. The same hormones. Yes. You said um, hair is one of the fastest growing uh, yep. um, areas, especially mm. in the scalp. Yeah. But why is it that um, people really struggle? I'm speaking on behalf of ladies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> why is it that um, people usually really struggle to grow their hair? Because okay. I know people who shave their hair so that their hair can start afresh. You're like, oh, give it a fresh start. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. see how it goes now. It's true. Uh, honestly, uh, one interesting factor, the hair is divided into two. Mm -hmm. You get on? We have the part that we see. Any hair that you see, like from here going up, you can see it. Yeah. We call that the hair shaft. Mm -hmm. Now, people are more concerned of the hair shaft, but they forget the hair does not start from where you see it. Mm. The hair starts now from the skin below. Okay. That is the hair root. And the hair root is not concerned or is not, it doesn't depend on what is happening up there. And that's why men cut the hair every week. They cut the hair every almost year. every week, every week. They are still growing because down there it is very dependent. Mm -hmm. So if your hair is not growing, if you use science facts, the hair is still growing. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, the moment the hair comes to the mm -hmm. surface, mm -hmm. it is about bidia kosasa. Oh. How conversant you are on how to take care of it. So the people say my hair is not growing, the first thing that comes in my mind, you don't know how to take care of it. Because uh -huh. God gave you, God will take care of the complexities down there, because actually there's a lot of complexities down there when mm -hmm. the hair is growing. But the moment it comes to the surface, I think now God gives you now that responsibility. Now it's up so, to you to, yeah, to ensure... To, to ensure, ensure the hair remains on the head. God yeah, will keep the hair coming. <laughs> supply is always coming, supply is always coming, but okay. how you maintain the supplies depends on how you maintain the hair. So people who say the hair is not growing, it shows as the hair is growing, the hair is cutting. As the hair is growing, the hair is cutting. And that's why there's stagnation. Mm -hmm. But God will never stagnate growth. It grows throughout. And that's why people mm -hmm. who put braid locks, you see when you when you put braid locks, the ones like, you have. Like mine. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see when you intertwine the hairs, even if the hair is falling, it can't fall because it is intertwined with the others. Mm -hmm. So every hair in the head, whether it has fallen, it is detached, it is still attached, it is still on the head. Mm. That's when you have dreadlocks, they can easily touch the floor after years. Yeah, because it yes. grows so fast. Yes. So, you know, like my dreadlocks have grown so fast. They are growing fast because they are not cutting. Uh -huh. But if you, keep, if you keep your hair free like mine, now you have so many challenges in keeping the hair. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, I can stay for years, like a year, two years without cutting my hair, but my hair doesn't seem to get longer. Yes, you get, stagnant. Eh? Yeah, so I know I'm losing hair as it is growing. Uh -huh. But if I don't want it, if I don't want to lose the hair, I have to change my maintenance, okay. how I maintain my hair, how I handle my hair, how I style my hair. Oh. If, I, if I'm able now to tackle that side, then I'm able to maintain, mm -hmm. you know, the hair in the head. That way it can grow. But at the same time, you have natural limitations, especially African like hair. Mm -hmm. African hair. If you look at the structure of African hair, it's very complicated. It's quite complex because mm -hmm. um, ideally, God was creating hair dependent on where he's placing you. For example, <laughs> wow. yeah, if you okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, because there's adaptation, you know, part of the hair. Mm -hmm. And that's if you look at, for example, Europeans, look at how their hairs grow. So it's soft yeah? and... Yeah, the hair is so nice, fast. just grows and gets out. Mm -hmm. But our hairs do some, you know, we some... work extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> Even on growth, it is working hard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> down there. And if you look at it uh, scientifically, Mm -hmm. you'll find that Asians, they have the most straight hair. Mm -hmm. So they have the least issues because wow. their follicles are straight in. They are straight. They mm -hmm. go straight in the skin. So the hair just grows straight out. Wow. With, the, with, the, with, the, with the Europeans, the follicle curves just a little bit. Uh -huh. And then on the yeah, opening, because the, the hair grows in a follicle. A follicle is a hole. Mm -hmm. It's like a pocket. So yeah. the hair grows in there. So for, for, for Asians, the pocket is rounded. The shape of the, of the, of the follicle is rounded. Mm -hmm. So the hair shoots straight out. So it has the least challenges. Mm -hmm. With Europeans, it's a bit oval. So it's a, bit, a little bit, you know, squeezed. squeezed. So the hair grows out like it is. Cal Cali. It is kind of curly. It has some waves. Mm -hmm. 
But for us, Africa, and I don't know why I think God has a good <laughs> intent. <laughs> now, ours How is okay. elliptical. Actually, it's like clo the, the, the follicle is like closed like this. It's very tight. <laughs> oh. And then, as it goes in, mm -hmm. it is, the curve is very tight. So actually, the follicle curves on the inside. So when the hair is growing out, it, it grows when it is curling itself because of the shape of the follicle and the tightness of the follicle. Mm -hmm. And actually, God had a plan. Because you see, in Africa, Africa is one of the hottest, hottest planets. Region. That is, hottest uh, continents mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in the world. So we have a lot of environmental, environmental impacts that can come easily on our heads. So the hair is able to grow in a way that it defies gravity for protection, wow. especially UV. Okay. And that's why our hair is not ideally, technically, meant to grow long. You get it. It's supposed to grow bushy. But mm -hmm. the kind of environmental impact it gets, it prohibits the hair from growing long. Mm -hmm. So Africans and lengths, I think technically is not our there's, thing. There's a place where you get and it says, this is the limit. This is the this limit is, you can we go. Can't go <laughs> past, yeah. no, we have tried enough, <laughs> we can go beyond that. <laughs> but you've said we have, it should also be uh, bulky kind yes, of thing. Yes, yeah, Afro. Afro, yeah. Yes, Afro. Some people struggle, and I'm speaking about myself because I had a problem <laughs> with, with be, having less hair on the head. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, try different solutions because mm -hmm. I really wanted the Afro kind of hair. Yeah. So what is usually the problem when you don't have that? Now, the, the, there's things that are natural that mm -hmm. you can't influence. God is the one who set it for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, are, there are natural things that the parameters, natural parameters of, that determine anything that you want to do with the hair. For example, uh, texture, the texture of your hair. We have fine texture, we have medium texture, we have coarse hair. If you have fine hair, so it means it's so soft, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, like baby's kind of hair. Yeah. If you want to flow on that hair, and that is the natural hair God gave you, mm -hmm. then you have a challenge in laying out the, the mm -hmm. afro. And the people who are having the coarse, hard, textured hair, they're the best when it comes now to afro. Because the hair is structurally strong, so it can be able now to stand on its own. Because you know it true. grows like a spring. And that's why it's able now to sprout out. Something else is density. Density is the number of follicles per square inch on the scalp. So if God gave you, for example, 15 follicles per, you know, per, per mm -hmm. the square inch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's no you can increase that. So God, there's what God predetermines before now you, you, you <laughs> kick in. And you say, I need my hair, this, I need my hair. There's some things you cannot go beyond. Okay. You get them? Eh? And uh, also, if you look at it at the same time, um, Naturally, our hairs are, the, uh, are actually prohibited from going from short to very long. Mm -hmm. Because naturally, our hair doesn't grow continuously in your, in your life long, in your, in your life that the hair is just growing every day, every day. Okay. The hair has cycles. Mm -hmm. So there's a growth cycle, there's a shedding cycle. Naturally, God said it that way. Mm -hmm. So the hair will grow four to six years, is actively growing. Oh. Then after that, it will take some brief stoppage of growth, and then the hair is shed by the body, then a new hair is introduced in the follicle. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's like a continue. So there's no way an African hair can be able to go, I think, beyond the back. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard. Because by the yeah. time, remember the struggles the hair is going through, structural, environmental, all this stuff. And then by the time now six years <laughs> are, are gone after it has really struggled now to survive, mm -hmm. now the shedding phase comes and the hair is shed and new hair is, is uh -huh. introduced. Oh. Right. Yes. Okay, interesting. So mm. there are things that you can't change because they're just natural. Yes. And, okay, yes. so I, I will accept and move on <laughs> from that. What yes. about, before we go to the hair loss, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the condition itself, yes. talk about the, the different kind of colors. We know for Africans we have the black hair, right? But there are those that have black that yeah. is rich black yeah. good black mm -hmm. and then there are those that have black that is almost brown, brown in a rara, <laughs> and it's really frustrating it's really... and you know mm -hmm. for for them so why is it why is it like this and can it can it change is there a way you can you can improve on it without you know doing Your dye colors. and all that yeah mm -hmm. actually um a point of correction our hair african is not black really yeah it's darkest blue <laughs> <laughs> no, you're questioning my ability to know colors. I know black. <laughs> no, Honestly. Actually, it's true because really? black hair, uh -huh. actually, Asians have black hair. If you take Asian hair and African hair, oh, wow. they're different. 
So, Af so African hair is not black, it's dark, very dark blue. So Asian hair is, is black. black. Yeah, it's How black. does that? Actually, if you take African hair, then you put black, black. You put dye, black dye, mm -hmm. it looks off. Because wow. that is not the natural, that's not the natural hue that you're supposed to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when it comes to color, most of the mm -hmm. times, uh, now coming from the technical angle, when you look at somebody who's having kind of brown tones, the one, either there is something that is missing in terms of nutri uh, nutrition. nutrition supply. Mm. Yes, in terms of nutrition. And some deficiencies will be seen from the hair. The hair will start now turning the color. Mm. If that is not the case, it shows abuse of the hair. And for you to see abuse, when you look at down there where the hair is just freshly growing and you compare it with the older part, if the older part is one that is getting the brown kind of shades and down there is a bit darker than the upper one, that shows abuse. Okay. And abuse comes from where? It comes now from services. For example, relaxer services, these are chemical services. The chemicals. Yeah, broad dries, the heat services. Mm. Actually, they do a lot of interference with the with the with the conformation of you know the hair has has parts. We have mm -hmm. the outer part, we have the inner part. The hair is made up of the inner part, not the outer part. Mm -hmm. Outer part is just we call it the cuticle layer. Mm -hmm. It is the outer layer. But the the inside is now the real hair, mm -hmm. and that's where now the wonders of the hair are. There are so much inside the hair. Okay. So when you start when you start seeing now the brown tones happening, so it means the melanin cells inside the hair must have been interfered with externally by some force, and this can be most likely chemicals mm -hmm. and heat. Okay. Uh, if it is not deficiency. Okay, yeah. so it can be turned around if you now do the right nutrition yes, yes. and you take care of your health better. And yes. we'll get to also how to maintain your hair. Sure. Now, uh, again, there's one more thing before we go to alopecia. Mm -hmm, if sure. someone is born <laughs> in Kenya to Kenyan parents, yep. original Kenyan parents, mm -hmm. and then they are raised uh, in the United States okay. or in Asia, mm -hmm. will their hair still remain? It will still remain. Because it's natural it's, it's how DNA. we were designed. It's your DNA. It will still remain. It's not the environment. Yeah, it's not the environment. So okay. the hair will, will, will remain. Mm -hmm. If it is in the environment, it has to take quite some years, quite, 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 uh, quite ge some generations mm -hmm. for it to change, for the environment impact to happen. And that's okay. why if you go to America and then you stay there, your children's children will be lighter than you. Uh -huh. Even because if you, you have adults. moved with your family. <laughs> Even if you move your family. So the environment will take time. You know, it, it, there will be a slow change of the DNA and the representation because, and that's why you see when Europeans come here, their skin start to change. They start mm. getting skin tans. Why? Because the environment. And if they continue staying, the skin will continue changing. Shining. Yes. Right. But if it turns too fast, then it can be dangerous. Okay. Yes. All right. Interesting. Yes. Interesting mm. things here. Now, alopecia, yes, uh, yes. the hair loss itself, when we when you see um Tunasamanga Kihara, uh, Kihara. is it is it <laughs> is it uh alopecia mm -hmm. and uh, what other forms are there? What are the types? Well, we have many types of alopecia. If I can count, uh, I can easily go to 20, oh. 20 different types of hair losses. Although most of them are they are, they are close by, but they are they are when you look at them you see quite some differences. Mm. You get them. Huh? But uh, to people they have alopecia, but to so many of them, they don't even know they have it. Because mm -hmm. I've seen people uh, branding themselves as, as team foreheads. <laughs> is that like, no. yeah. let's gather people uh, with foreheads let's gather gather here please yeah <laughs> forehead forehead is alopecia. it's alopecia it is alopecia uh -huh. so actually the the forehead becomes more profound because the hairline has recessed Oh. So they don't see the recession, they end up seeing the forehead. <laughs> you get <laughs> Okay, this, this is news. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that's why um, when, uh, when, when there's, some, there's some things when the when, they, when alopecia is coming, it, it doesn't just come. There's some things you must experience. Mm -hmm. If you ignore them, then it will catch up with you. Okay. But if you feel them and then you start working around it, then it is easier for you to get solution. Mm -hmm. So alopecias are many. And actually, alopecia is from kids to teenagers to, to midlife to adults to old people. At any time, any gender, any person can get alopecia at any point, mm. depending on the uh, depending on what you're subjected to. Okay. Yes. And yes. Th there are those that are inherited. 
hereditary. Yes, hereditary. The most common one is if your if your if your parents are having baldness, then you guys are not lucky. You must have it. So baldness is not a style <laughs> as we see it. But most men, when they go bald, they're hiding something. Oh, guys, will investigate. <laughs> and that is that is what you call uh, in a in a in a common in a common term. We call that androgenetic alopecia, because mm. it's a loss that uh, that rides on two things: androgen those two words, androgen hormones, then genetics. That is the genetic codes. Mm. You have inherited the gene from the father or the mother or the grandfather, grandmother, and then you have it. So the moment the androgen hormone kicks during puberty, you're not safe. <laughs> things will start danger. going. Yes, yes. So okay. things start going wrong, and then at the top here, you must start experiencing thinning. That mm. starts either here or starts at the corners here, and mm. then eventually, when you're about 35, 40, around there, the whole of this part will be an airport. You'll be having here. If that is a man, <laughs> <laughs> but for a lady, because you know, oh, wow. actually, uh -huh. ladies also have the hereditary hair loss, but most people don't. Actually, they don't know. Uh -huh. So when men go bald, women lose about 50 percent of the hair here. So if you have thinning here, check your father, check your mother, check your grandparents. Mm -hmm. You must have the hair loss. And your kids, you'll pass it on. Oh. And God made it that way, so there's nothing much you can do about it. <laughs> so one of the qualities I will check in my husband, how is your hair? Yes. <laughs> For the sake of my kids. If he, right. if he shaves clean, just go and touch it. If you feel like the forehead is all uh -huh. the way you're like, yeah, he's a victim. Because <laughs> they know so how to hide it. Even check they the know how to hide it, I know. Oh. Okay, <laughs> quite interesting. Yes. Now, what are the ways, what are um, uh, some of the indicators mm -hmm. uh, that uh, alopecia is setting in so that you can prevent it or something? Yeah, dep no, it depends with the alopecia that you're going to have because a category, okay, we have different types of alopecia. Mm -hmm. Now, the signs, they come depending on what is coming. Okay, so you mm -hmm. mentioned, the co what are the common types? The common types, mentioned? like for example, the most common one that, um, mm -hmm. that I always see we call that CCCCA, triple C A, that mm -hmm. is central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. It starts here at the center. When you see, mainly for women. Mm -hmm. And these women, they must be over 35 years. So at the center, you at have the center hair loss. here. They have actually a clean patch at the center here. Uh, but the hairline and all the hairs around the hairline around entirely, it is it's okay. okay. But at the center here, they are losing hair. Mm -hmm. And they start with thinning. And then they complain of pain. If, if if the scalp is being worked on, they don't complain any of the part. But when it is around there, they're like, hey, I'm feeling a lot of pain there. If they're blood drying, they're like, no, 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 that place is painful. Mm -hmm. So that pain becomes now the indicator that there's alopecia that is that is in coming the man. Up. Yeah, it's coming okay. up. It and to catch up with you. Yeah, be very careful. careful pain, when you... pain is not something that is supposed to be on the scalp. The second ah. one is itchiness. When you feel there's some itchiness that is persistent on a particular area, that particular area, it has something that, that will show up. Okay. Yes, and maybe some Sometimes itchiness will come with some, some dandruff, what people call dandruff, but you call that scaling. So when you see some scales coming out, that is not normal. Mm -hmm. Something in the years to come must show up. And something interesting, by the time the hair loss starts, and by the time you see it, most hair losses, they take over 10 years. Wow. That so is an had, interesting fact. You yes. had 10 years to change yeah, things. Yes, and that's why it catches with people very quickly because it has a very big duration of incubation. Mm -hmm. So by the time now the hair is falling, it is almost full blown. It will push the hairs like crazy. That's why people talk of, actually, mm -hmm. imagine it started like two years ago. Now I'm not having it. I'm like, it started like 12 years ago. <laughs> <You just laughs> that's what it started. Yes, that's okay. what it started. Okay, so the itchiness, yeah. the pain. The itchiness, the pain, the sensitivity. Sometimes people get some pimples. You find like those goose pimples, mm -hmm. you get the hairs are having go those goose pimples around it, and sometimes they get infection. So you get some, you know, it has some pus, mm -hmm. you know. So any of that, it's not a good sign. Something else, thinning. You notice that, especially at the top here, this is the most sensitive part of the hair. Now, what do you mean mm. by thinning? Thinning, it means um, the hair that you used to have, the the strong, you know, beautiful hair, mm. thick hair. Now, you start to find that, when you're, even a simple way, when you're combing, like for us, mm. when I'm putting the combing, I'm like even closing my eyes, because the hair is so thick and, you know, so strong. Yeah. But when I come here, the, the comb is just going through very quickly. <laughs> you're thinning. That's thinning. You're thinning. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your hair is soft and it's usually just... Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. But naturally, even when 
to touch the hair. Like if you just touch the hair and hold it and then you hold a thinning area, you'll feel the hair is lighter. Because mm. when thinning it means you're losing some hairs. So if you had like 100 hairs in an area, now you're having like 70. Okay. The feel of 100 is different from, from the feel, feel of, of 70. 70. 70 is lighter. You'd notice, okay. Yes, and that's what you call miniaturization. Mm -hmm. The shrinkage mm -hmm. of the follicle, and the hair gets smaller, shorter, shorter until it disappears. Wow. Yes. All right. So uh, those are some of the indicators. Those are some of the of the indicators. Okay. But there are some hair losses where they don't have any indicators. Um, you just like you wake up in the morning, you already have a patch. Mm -hmm. No pain, no nothing. It's just a circular patch and you don't feel anything. For do. Yeah, and the hair is gone. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to get to maybe the recovery if mm -hmm. there's uh, where someone can recover from it. Yep. What about those that uh, usually lose hair on the sides? The, the, they have the hair at the mm -hmm. center, but for some I know it's a style and people just shuka hair. Or I don't know if it's a, a mechanism. I do not know. <laughs> maybe you will tell us. But is there an explanation to that? Yes. Uh, there's a hair loss that rides on the hairline. Mm -hmm. We call that FFA. It's an autoimmune mediated hair loss. It's very, it's very devastating because it's the most technically challenging hair loss to treat. Mm -hmm. And to about, uh, with my statistics, to about 80-90%, they can't recover it. Oh, really? Yeah, when the, when the hair is gone, it's gone. It's a very devastating hair loss. Oh. And actually, it starts on the, here on the temples. So mm -hmm. you find uh, just in front of the ears, there's a straight line that has gone up, up to here. Oh. And this hair goes here and then becomes smooth and uh -huh. shiny, you know, smooth and shiny. Even if there is hair, it is one one to baby kind of hairs. Mm -hmm. That's how it comes in. And then after that, it comes at the center here. You see, it has, it has dropped a straight line up to this corner here. Mm -hmm. Now it comes again after, now this is the first stage. The mm -hmm. second stage, it will come from the front because it wants to create a straight line from ear to ear. So yeah. it, you see, we have a, an M kind of hairline. Mm -hmm. So it is actually eating out the M. So it starts on the corners. Uh, for the sides, temples up to the frontal corners here, mm -hmm. and then it comes here and then joins mm -hmm. the straight line. The moment it's joining the straight line, start mm -hmm. thinning here, start eating the hair at the center here because now it wants again now to push the line to the ah. crown here. When it pushes here, now it pushes behind the ear. Mm -hmm. So it pushes the hairline to the back at the same time pushing the hair at the top towards the back. And if you're lucky, it can leave you with some hairs on the occipital. Kisogo, some little <laughs> hairs at the back. That's there. if you're lucky, but if it doesn't lucky, help. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't help when the hair is over here. Mm. And you see, hair losses are a lot good. You see, mm. if hair losses start at the back, most people could not even... You take, can hide it. it. You can hide it, because you, know, you just, you know... You, you know, drain you drop. Who, who yes. will know you don't have hair <clears> at the back? But let me tell you, hair losses start where you can't hide. Truly? Yeah, because the front and the top. That's, that's quite <laughs> something. Yeah. And I know people want to know, what, what is the solution to this? Mm -hmm. How do you, is there a treatment? Can you treat such, especially for, I think it, that's very common yes. for the hairline, especially yes. for the ladies, yes. because of what we usually braid ourselves. Yes, and yes. even you will tell us what are some of the things that lead to hair loss when you're talking about management. Yes, yes. But is there treatment? Yeah, treatments it? are there. But... Uh, <clears throat> alopecia is something that is, even today, alopecia is still at a, at a very deep research. A lot is not known. Mm. Actually, if, you, if you're trying to dig deeper in alopecia world, you'll find so many not known treatment. Mm -hmm. You can try this, but she's not verified. You yeah. can try this that can work with one person. It's not necessary to work with the other person. So there are so many, actually, we have, we have so many areas that needs to be covered for us to be able to understand alopecia. Mm -hmm. So what is happening today, we have what is, what is general, general approach to hair losses. And <clears throat> I advise people, because we have a challenge when it comes to treatment, it is always good for the hair loss to be checked before you lose the hair. Mm. It is very expensive when the hair falls. Preventative Prevent <coughs> measures yes. are better. Yes, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. And if you look at prevention more, you'll be safer. Because okay. not uh, when you look at treatment, the challenge is not necessarily the cost, even the challenge of effectiveness. Mm -hmm. That is actually, to me, the, the more challenge is not of the cost, is of effectiveness. Because okay. it is not a mass that is going to work. Mm -hmm. And then number two, even if it's going to work, it will take quite some years. Because remember the hair stayed over 10, like most people in average, I see them when they're about 15 years with the hair loss, since when it started, when it was triggered. Mm -hmm. So 15 years, when you're having the, the, the problem in the scalp, you can't treat it, you know, Kenyans are magical. Mm -hmm. They need something 
Like immediately. Like, can it grow next time? I'm, I'm <laughs> like, you'll be losing it for the last time. I think decade. I have a wedding <laughs> to attend in a month's yes. time. Yes. Yeah. And actually, most hair losses uh, for successful treatment, they must be, they, they must go beyond one year of serious therapy. One year, wow. actually hair grows between one year and two years. That's when the hair is going to grow. Wow. In proportion to the years that it took for it to be where, where it, it is. is. So there is no magic. I see guys saying uh, there's an oil that grows the hair within three weeks. Oh Just my goodness. I'm like, hey, God save my see. people. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not lie. true. It's a lie. It's not true. It's not factual. You get it. Huh? Okay. So when you when you look at hair losses, the treatments that we have today, mm. um, we have clinical treatments. Like we have three main that are mainly used and actually they're universally used. Mm. Not in Africa, also in Asia, in Europe, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. The most common one you talk about alopecia, people will tell you about hair transplant. Mm -hmm. That it's transferring hair from where you have more to where you have less. It's mm. like redistributing the hairs. You have lost the hair on the hairline, you still have at the back, we harvest at the back and then we push it to the front. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the second one is what you call PRP. Okay, PRP is not necessarily a treatment, but it's a support. I take it more of a support because mm -hmm. we take blood and then we separate the components. We take platelets and plasma, concentrated form. Those are growth factors, they're fertility factors, and then we inject on the, on the head. So if the hairs are struggling, oh, really? you we get put fertilizer on your, oh, on your yes, head. from your blood. <laughs> like you need to grow. <laughs> and the hair is able to grow. Uh -huh. The third one that is mainly used is use of uh, steroids. Steroids, uh, mostly injectables if you're in a clinical facility. Mm -hmm. And especially you have the sensitivity, the pain, the infections, you know, those problems. Uh -huh. So clinically, uh, steroids are the most recommended. Mm -hmm. But of course, they have their own share of side effects at the same time. Okay. Do yeah. they, is there some <coughs> surgical procedures? Yeah. The, the, okay. They are minor. All of them are minor surgeries whereby okay. you come in, it's done, and you go. Even transplant, you come in, it's ah, done, and you go. Okay. And you just need like a week of managing the mm -hmm. scalp because of course you'll swell after that but it, it's not it's not a major a major but the thing is that you would not know if it will work for you it's not guaranteed that yes it will work for now you. if you look at it technically like now from my angle mm -hmm. it's not advisable as per se because guys just jump to transplant you know if there's something you should ask yourself like you know you have a lot of hair mm -hmm. right no, when you start losing hair, the hair didn't just think of getting lost and it just went out of your head and disappeared. Mm -hmm. It was pushed by a reason. Something pushed the hair out. So it means the original hair that got planted is pushed out. Mm -hmm. So it means uh, it is more sensible. Before I plant hair, I ask myself, what pushed this hair out? Mm -hmm. if, I don't, if you don't take care of it, even if you introduce new hair, it will suffer the same fate. Then a faster fate than the original one, because <laughs> the original was anchored. This one you're just putting it, it can't even germinate. Okay. And actually that's why in Africa we are having quite a huge failure rate of hair transplants. Mm. And you know at the same time, like now if you look at uh, if you look at the literature that you have in alopecia, you'll find that the statistic shows that about 80% of hair losses are hereditary. That is not our statistics. Mm. That is mainly uh, European statistics. Okay. But African statistics, over 80% of our hair losses are accidents. You didn't, you're not born with it. Oh, Somehow an accident happened and then there you are with the consequences. The yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Along the way. Okay. Yes. So, so it also with us, when you're training, it also needs us also to be, to think outside the box. You know, like personally, when you are when you are doing the when you are doing the course, it's a two-year course. Mm -hmm. The more we are being trained, the more I was questioning. Because me, I know my. You know, my, before I became a trichologist, I was a mm -hmm. cosmetologist. Ah. Hair is my thing. You yeah. get it. Eh? Mm -hmm. And I did cosmetology. That is hairdressing. I did it in 2004. Mm -hmm. Then about in 2014, 16, that's when I did trichology. You see, I had quite some years before I went to trichology. Yeah, I, yeah, so I could experience. understand the hair itself better than even my teacher, who is teaching me trichology. You get it. <laughs> So they say I could relate. Mm. And actually there's some things the teacher was talking about in my mind. I'm like, that's not, Af that's not for Africa. The way mm. no African hair, it can't go like that. <laughs> and actually, after I completed and I started practicing in, in a hospital, actually that's when I confirmed this cannot, it's not easy for us to go in this direction. Because uh -huh. actually, practically, you are doing it, you are planting hair, and the hair is not growing. You're mm -hmm. failing. You are injecting people, and it's not working. So, African challenges are African challenges. Chinese. They need African solutions. Solutions <laughs> tailored for yes. us. Yes. Okay. Finally, I want us to know, to mm -hmm. find out, um, what is the good management of hair? Like, what do we do uh -huh. that causes hair loss, and then how can we manage it? It's okay. Now, I have talked about um, the major cause of our hair loss is accidental. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So where are these accidents? Actually, it came up with the time where there's a time around uh, 2000 and something before 2010 around there. Mm -hmm. Hopkins Hospital in the States, it ran, I really think it was around, around that time. Mm -hmm. I'm not very sure about the dates, but around that time because I got hold of the abstract. They started seeing people of African descent going to the hospital in the dermatology department because of alopecia, mm -hmm. more than any other race. Okay. Not Mexican, not, not Europeans, not Asians, just African descent. Mm. They started now doing their own research. And they found that whatever they do on their hair, other people don't do. And they ended up in the salon. Mm. So it made it easier for me to go to the culpit. Where, is this, where are these accidents happening? Okay. And actually today, I'm sorry to say, salons are the likely accident scenes. <laughs> I like how you say it. <laughs> Accident scenes yes. in the salon, where we go to make it look Where you go to make you, yes. Yeah, that's where we... Yes, because remember... Damage it. Huh? Yes, because if you look at our hair, it was never... God never put our hair necessarily for beauty as per se. Really? It was more of protection. <laughs> okay. You get it, eh? especially because of our sun. Our mm. sun and UV stuff is very, actually, is not very healthy. So we need to have this. So our hairs are actually affected so much by, by the environment, the UV in our environment. Mm. So it means us is like we want our hairs to grow differently than how, uh, how geographically supposed to grow. And that's why we, we, there was a craze of the hair needs to be straighter, mm. the hair needs to be softer. But God never had that intent. Because I think if God wanted our hair to be soft, He could have said, be, "Let it be soft, uh, automatically <laughs> soft. Let it be straight." Be. But He couldn't have served the purpose. You mm -hmm. get it? Eh? So the challenge of changing our hair ideally from the purpose that is where the accidents are happening. Because it you force our hair is very springy. For it to be straight, for it to be societal accepted, because the challenge is societal. Is actually there's, if you look at it, is the society acceptance. Yeah, so if, like for example, way. if some years back. If you had hair like mine, people are like, this guy is very broke. He can't even afford to go to the salon. You get, eh? <laughs> yeah. Even ladies. And that's why you had to do styling, you know. The more the hairs were being taken through the stress of styling. And styling, remember, there, it was not easy for you to go wash your hair, condition your hair, and then you're made without any other form of treatment. There must be heat. If it is not heat, there must be form of chemicals mm -hmm. on your hair. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. the price you're paying in alopecia in our side of the world is due to the things that you have done in the salon. And the risk is, the guy who is doing it, if you look at the training of our hairdressers, oh, I'm sorry, it's one thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, people are not trained on hair science, and actually that is the dangerous okay. behind it. People do hair, you see, technically, uh, you know, hair is mainly on the vocational institutions. Mm. You get it? Eh? It's just the skill. Yes, the skill. You have the skill yes. you go with it. And you see, hair is very different because the hair, hair has, has science. At the same time, it has art. Mm. But our institutions, they Focus concentrate on, on the art, art but they forget that. Yes, and that's why I say vocational training is ideally more for like masonry, mm. say carpentry, because wood is wood. If you hit it, you hit it. Yeah. There's no problem. You get it. Eh? Yeah. If you're screwing something like a, like a mechanic, you screw it. There's it's, no problem. But something that is growing, mess it up, you mess everything. Because the body, the body is going to mutate and change. Mm -hmm. And actually most of the hair losses, they come as a result of something going wrong. It goes wrong wrong, 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 no correction, no correction, then the body now changes completely. Mm -hmm. You get it? And actually, if we change the approach of the hairdresser in terms of understanding, just understanding, this hairdresser will be very good in terms of avoiding alopecia because yeah. most of our hair losses are caused in the salon. In the salon. And it is painful because yeah. you're finding uh, young mothers, they have their daughters, they are mothers they don't have hair, they take their daughters to the same salon, the same broad dry. Now this kid is about less than five years. The mother started doing hair when she was in the teens. Now she's 30, she doesn't have hair. Now she's like teens. But if we are like five years, I'm preparing to be seeing patients who are just 10 years old it will be very painful it will be very unfortunate it's very unfair okay yeah. so it's the what exactly in the salon mm -hmm. um causes the stresses um, and eventually the, halos. the loss of the, the hair is it the pulling mm -hmm. uh, also or is it just the heat mm -hmm. and the dryers that we subject them to? actually all of them the worst if you uh, i do my own statistics with my own my own practice 70% mm -hmm. of the causes of alopecia that i see they are caused by strong harsh chemicals mm -hmm. and the leading is hair relaxers 
hair relaxers. Because uh -huh. you see, the con if you look at the conformation of hair relaxer, it's very caustic. Actually, the pH of hair relaxers is 14. Wow. It is the highest on the pH scale. Uh -huh. And the hair needs a pH of 5 on average. Oh. So you're going more than 10 million times more alkaline than the normal. So it, and then it, it's, most of the reactors that you use, they're made of sodium hydroxide. Sodium is a reactive metal. And that's why when the reactor is put on your scalp, you start feeling the harshness. When I say manachomeka, mm. it is the sodium that is now eating the scalp. Okay. And actually that's where the, the, the DJ comes in. Because the moment you're sensing the the, the burning sensation on the scalp on your have relaxer zone, the relaxer has penetrated beyond the dead layer, the epidermal layer. Now it is it has infiltrated, in it is layer. in the dermal layer. Dermal layer is very protected because that's where cells are. So the moment it goes there, then the body senses there's something, immune system is sent, white blood cells, they go to protect. And the infiltration cannot happen on the skin, the, 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 the skin, because the skin mm -hmm. is blocked. It happens on the follicle because the follicle is a hole. Oh. So it goes through the hole. So it contaminates the follicle, contaminates the hair. So when the immune system is initiated, now the follicle, the hair, they are collateral damage. Oh. And the moment one follicle is fought by the immune system, you are not safe. Eventually, even if you take 20 years, you lose all the hair. Because yeah. the follicles have the identical cells. Uh -huh. So after it fights here, it identifies this is an antigen. So it will realize there's another adjacent follicle that has uh, the same type of cells, then it becomes an interest. Mm -hmm. And that's why hair loss starts from a point. Then, it, it, okay, most hair loss will start from an area, then goes. Yes. Yeah, because it's detecting, detecting. Mm -hmm. Although there are some that will go haphazard, depending now on the reaction, the autoimmune reaction to what mm -hmm. has happened. So one <coughs> follicle, all of them down, eventually. All them down. Eventually all of them it's down. the fate that uh, they face. Yes, and the second that. one, before mm -hmm. we get, because that is relaxer, the second one is heat, blow dry. Mm -hmm. Actually, blow dry is the worst tool that can go to our hair. Blood dry is the worst. Wow, but what do we do? Because it we is the most hard. loved. We I don't know why women love blood dry. Because we yeah. have tough hair. Our hair is too hard and it's supposed to be tough. No, yeah. when, you, when you wash your hair, how do you style it without <laughs> doing blood dry? Actually, it's hard. actually, mm -hmm. uh, our hairs. The moment you wash it and you condition it properly, you need to style it when it is damp. Don't put any heat in it. Mm -hmm. Don't put chemical in it style it. So it means we have to look for our own adaptive styles that are not risky because now you are doing risky styles. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it is better to struggle with your hard cause hair, you know, than struggling with alopecia. <laughs> so this is safer. <laughs> so heat is not good. And actually uh, during Corona time, we are made aware of a new alopecia that came with Corona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corona induced alopecia. In Europe, after, after the patients recovered, two months later, they were losing hair pr like Oh. And after research, they found that uh, Corona was coming with uh, COVID was coming with uh, with, with, with with fever. So the temp was shooting with about two degrees up. Then persistent for about two, three, four days. It is enough for the follicle cells now to face out and the hair to fall off. Now those are two degrees mm -hmm. for about two, three, four days. Broad dry hits the hair to about 180 to 220 degrees. That's why when that mm. heat gets on a woman's head, mm. look for her behind the just. Yeah. Usually, usually, yeah. usually. Actually, it's a cat and mouse thing between the hairdresser and the lady. <laughs> usually, very problematic. I think that's why I went to dread it. It was too problematic. It's true. It is ah, true. That so is, that's it what is it too does much. to the hair. Yes, it, does, those, it affects the follicles. Yes, and you see, the hair is a good conductor of heat. So when you heat too much at the top, it will conduct to the sensitive, so that is temperature sensitive cells down there. Mm -hmm. If COVID can remove the hair with the two degrees, what about now this? One eighty degrees. Uh, one eighty degrees. It's devastating, actually. My. What about uh, the dryer? What does it do? The dryer. It heats about 70, 70 degrees Celsius. So dryer 70, that's too hot. I always see women literally hanging with the dryer. They are literally holding in. Quarter is inside, three quarter is outside. Yeah. Actually, that's how alopecia starts. And you see most of the time, it, this part is the one that is subjected to the dryer. Now it becomes risky that you can easily get the CCA that starts from here mm. yeah, through heat. So the best is the heat of the dryer should never go beyond 55 degrees. The hairdresser should regulate that. So it should be 55. 55 I'm taking degrees. notes because when yeah. I'm going to my hairdresser, <laughs> should be 55. 55. I don't mind yes. staying there for long, but yes. I'm going to 55. 55, at the same time, you're not supposed to take more than 20 minutes in the dryer. Uh -huh. More than 20 minutes in the dryer. So 55, 20 minutes, if your hair is not you're dry, okay. you The just... guy should be checking your hair is dry. And dry is... Uh -huh. You're drying the surface water. Okay. You're not drying the internal water, the okay. moisture. So this guy, you know, hairdressers, they need, they need to train. Because they go...
treat your hair, introduce moisture into your hair, then they take you in a dryer, the dryer sucks out all the moisture, and then you pay for it. <laughs> and then the hair is dry. <laughs> and then you get alopecia. Then you get alopecia. <laughs> it's a circle that no one can help the other one. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is crazy. I, I, I think I'm just becoming woke, and uh, now I'll be very intentional when I'm going to my hair state. It's true. The third one to mm -hmm. take care of is, say, is pressure, studying pressure, tension, pulling. Because mm. it gives you what you call traction alopecia and mainly affects the hairline. Yeah, yeah pulling on the hairline. Because yes. I, I, I think I had a problem with some my hairline. Yes. But thank God my hair is back. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because I used to do a lot of braids. Braids, braids, braids. twists, weaves, all these actually they'll drive you towards traction alopecia. There is no good, good braider who has good hair. <laughs> no one, look for them, no one, no one braids so much and have good hair. The more you braid, the worse your hair will be. Okay. Yeah. So what are your recommendations then? How do we manage our hair? How can we maintain our hair? What style should we adopt and still look good? Do good. Yeah. We look good when our hair is the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very subjective. Yeah, it depends. Actually, uh, one thing we should, we, uh, we always advocate for is for you first, understand your hair. And understand the hair, avoid social media. I already see so many mis misinformations done on the social media. Mm. I don't know, take this, take that, Coconut, water, spritz, she what, what, mix, avocado. spray, spray. And if you ask about the chemical composition of what you've done, the impact you have on the hair, you have no idea. Even the teacher who is teaching you has no idea. <laughs> you get it? And there's a lot of do-yourselves, do you know, going here, going around. And you see there are people with very serious alopecia. They're listening to people who are telling them, do yourself, I did this, my hair grew. And maybe the person had a hormonal mishap, the hair fell, and then <laughs> hormones correct the hair grew, then they're like, the magic is onion. Now yeah. every woman is running to the onion. onion. <laughs> you get, uh, eh? And when yeah. you say hormonal yeah. influence, it's like when uh, our mother is breastfeeding and, yes. because, you know, it and comes actually back it's, eventually. It starts way back in pregnancy because uh. during pregnancy, of course, there's a huge hormonal shift. Mm -hmm. And after delivery, there will be realignment of the hormones because now the kid is out uh -huh. and then breastfeeding is happening. So that's what you call post, uh, postpartum alopecia in mm -hmm. case you have that. It is self-correcting because okay. it's only that the hormones were not stable. Now they're stabilizing. So you tend up to lose hair because of that. But after stabilizing, it will come back. There's nothing okay. that you need to do on that. Yeah. After about six months, it's supposed to come back. If it doesn't come back, go no, and be checked. Yeah, be checked. Six, six months. months supposed to self-correct. Mm -hmm. So women like that, they will go do stuff and then they think, what they did is what made the hair grow. Then they're there on the internet telling every woman, run, <laughs> run, run, this is the magic product. It's not true. It's okay. not true. So we avoid social media. <laughs> yeah, uh, the teachers experts. are many. Yeah, there are so many experts there. You know? Yeah. Then number two, mm -hmm. our understanding is understand your hair, you know, the dynamics of your own hair in terms of the texture you have the density you have. You see the texture does go, everyone is running about for C, I don't know. People are, are, actually they are dying to know, am I for A, am I for Z? Why is it important for you to know <laughs> you where you are? It's not very important. But if you know your hair is hard, that is texture, it will help you. If my hair, like now my hair is coarse. Mm -hmm. So there's what I know it can do, other hairs cannot do. Also it has its own challenges. Because when it is coarse, porosity, absorption is very slow. Mm. So it means you have, to do, you have to do it and you have to force it. And that's if you want to moisturize properly, I have mm. to use like dryer or the sun. I mm. put a shower cap, then I go to the sun to force it to go in because porosity is very low. Okay. So if you have those understanding, you know how to, how to handle your hair. Then hair losses are not similar. They're very different. What I do, it will depend on what I have. Mm -hmm. You don't have what I have, so don't follow me. You, you have your own path because of the challenge. Like now you have malaria, mm -hmm. I have a headache. We can't go in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You get it. So it's not one suit fits all. No, it has to be managed independently. Then, any style that you do, make sure three things. Mm -hmm. There's no harsh chemicals on your scalp. Not yeah. the hair, the scalp, because the scalp is the one that is alive. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then number two, you don't have heat, excess heat on your scalp. Number three, mm -hmm. there's no tension, pulling. No tension, mm -hmm. no pulling. If you do that, at least you're safe. Then number four, know how to manage the hair. And because natural, natural hair is naturally strong, because there's no interference with the structures, it is only prone to dryness. Mm. So you only be taking care of moisture. So you'll be moisturizing. Mm. And moisturizing, I, I don't encourage people to do the water stuff. You know, the adrenal pool, water grazing. It's not even, it's not necessary. How do you, how should you moisturize? Uh, I prefer get a product that is formulated. Because formulated products, they are enriched with quite several ingredients. What you need to be sure is, what are the ingredients? Mm -hmm. Then who is the manufacturer? The cheaper, the worse. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, the cheaper the product, the worse the hair. <laughs> the worse so we can tell the type of product you use by looking at your hair. Okay. You know, the, the poorer it is, the cheaper products that you use. So at the end of the day, it's a matter of getting the right products. Bit pricey products are good because ingredients are healthier. You mm -hmm. get them. Then don't get products with the harsh ingredients. That's why we have uh, we have a conformation that we call natural hair products. Mm. They are good, yeah. and the more ingredients there are, the better. Okay. The so less, the worse. Yes, the, within the natural, you need the the, the, the natural category, mm. not not the other one. Although people who understand like me, I can go to the conventional products and get a moisturizing product, and actually they work very well. But you see, somebody who is, you know, we have diehards. Let me tell you, if you tell women something that is not natural and they are team natural, they will kill you. They will <laughs> not go. They will never understand what you are telling them. So mm. them, I tell them, go look for natural within the natural ranges. Look for good moisturizing product. But you have a challenge when these natural manufacturers when they're making their products, to me, it's like they don't really test the product if it is working. Mm. It's like you go, get a formula, and then copy the formula, and then you say, the formula I got is for moisturization. You mm. get it? But they didn't actually test with a if person, especially our hair. Our hair is very tricky. Mm. So if you test it on a person, you'll be able to tell if mm. it is working or not. So our hair needs a lot of moisturization. And the easiest moisturizers you can be able to get for our hair in, to get that moisture is Levine. And Levine treatments, they're very oh, good in moisturizing. Yeah. Yeah, very good, good moisturizers. Yeah, Levine's are very good in moisturization. Mm. But when you use it, remember, they are more of water because Levine's about 80% water, 20% now oils and other stuff. Mm. So it has a lot, of, a lot of water. So when it has a lot of water, yes, it will hydrate. But as it hydrates, it can easily it can, easily, uh, it can easily go in, it can easily go out. Okay. And that's why we talk about sealing it. So when you put a moisturizing product, use an oil, a very light oil on top, so that the oil can form a sealant, mm -hmm. so that the moisture cannot be able to get lost get through the same cuticles where it went in. Because okay. moisturization is not on the outside, Moisturization is on the inside, the cortex layer. That's where we need. If the hair is breaking, the hair doesn't break from outside, it breaks from inside. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to keep taking care of the inside. the inside. And moisturizers will help us do that. Okay, so yes. when we're going for um, our hair, to, to make our hair yes. and to treat our hair, then leave-in is the best form because these others you're usually subjected to. The yeah, dry. maybe I can do a correction. You know, that's why we talk for four hours. You know, there's a lot of information and misinformation <laughs> yes, is very me. dangerous. Eh? Mm -hmm. and now, this is it. Eh? Remember, we have three types of treatments. We have protein, moisturizing, and leave-ins. Mm -hmm. Proteins are for weak hairs, breakages, challenges mm -hmm. of, of health of the hair. Then moisturizing is for dryness. Leave-in is a support for both. So if you do live in, live in, live in too much, mm -hmm. sometimes you might end up having challenges over time. And that's why when you have a living, living is good, yes, but it is not very powerful. It mm -hmm. doesn't need to be supported over time. Maybe once or a month or after two months, you do a moisturizing treatment. You go to the salon, they wash you, you put a moisturizing treatment, you go in the dryer for about 15 minutes, they rinse it off. That suppose is good okay. for the living. But living throughout, it is not very strong to sustain you mm -hmm. throughout as, as, as a hair care routine. Okay. Yes, yes, Interesting. Yes. So yes, yes. there's a lot. What about um, <coughs> for someone who's had chemical and their hair is not natural anymore? Yes. And they want to, their hair has been affected and they want to go back to team natural. To team natural. How do they do it? Is it possible to reverse the effects or do you have to shave your hair to start again? What do you do? Okay. Now that is, you want now to shift from chemically treated hair to natural hair. Yeah. That is a transition. Now the moment you put chemicals on the hair, that's a chemical change. When you go to chemistry, chemistry of hair, that is chemical change. Chemical changes are not reversible. Because mm. when you put relaxers on the hair, uh -huh. they, they disturb the, we, we have what you call structural bones, the, that is polypeptide bones, and then you have side bones. Salon services, they work with the side bones. Mm -hmm. The structures that holds the hair in place. Okay. And for this case, relaxers will work with the chemical bond, the strongest bond of the side bonds, mm. and then destabilize it. And because it's a chemical bond, the moment it is detached, it doesn't hold, it doesn't hold back. Okay. And that's when you put chemical and the hair straightens, it remains straight. Wow. Forever. It will never go back to natural. Mm -hmm. So if you're transiting, then it means two things. Either you cut the hair, and you see by that time you'll be risking now the risk of abrupt change of your, you know, hair is a signature, mm -hmm. your appearance. You see, like the way you are, we are used to you the way you are. If you cut your hair, you change it. Is that you? Because yeah, you look, you look different. different. Yeah, you look different. <laughs> so to avoid that, outgrow. 
So let the growth grow, stop doing chemicals. When it gets to some length, as it grows, continue trimming. As it grows, you'll be able to maintain now the length of the hair. Then eventually you'll cut all the chemically treated hair, and then you're left with the natural hair. Then continue with the natural hair. Okay. Yes, but chemical hair, the moment you do it, is permanent. It's you, can't <laughs> you can't reverse the effect. <laughs> you can't reverse the effect. It just takes time for it yes. to, to... Yeah, uh, you give it time, and then how to grow, grow and then keep trimming it off to avoid the drastic change. Mm -hmm. Especially for career women where your image is constant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. What about dreadlocks? How does it affect your hair? Because now mm -hmm. with dreads, like mine, yeah. temporary dreadlocks, I yes. can decide to remove it oh, yeah. after a month. Mm -hmm. How does it affect my hair? Because I, I remember when we were starting, you said, uh, you know, to show how much our hair grows and it's usually it lost. Yes. But because of the intertwining, then it mm -hmm. grows it faster grows, when yes. it's dreads. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell me about that. Actually, dreadlocks, like now artificial dreads. If you, if you come to me with artificial, artificial dreads, my point will be coming from the effect of those artificial fibers, mm -hmm. if they're artificial, to your hair. And if they're artificial, they'll be deprimental. Really? Yes. <laughs> I wish they are natural fibers. Natural fibers are safer. They are closer to your natural hair. Those are natural fibers. Mm -hmm. They are closer to your hair. So the relationship between the two is healthier than when you're having the, this, uh, this other artificial, especially mm -hmm. the, the synthetic ones. They are the worst, mm -hmm. you know. And you know when they are coming in because they are shipped in, they are very dry so that they can control m microbial infestation. Because when they come, they have, when they are having some, some moisture, they can easily colonize uh, mm -hmm. uh, microorganisms. Okay. So as a regulation, they should be very dry and then chemically treated to kill anything, any microorganism there. Mm. So if you take it and you put it on your hair, you're putting a very dusty, a very dry fiber to your own hair. Mm. So osmotic pressure has to come in place. Mm -hmm. So you, this fiber will be pulling hair from your hair, and your hair is struggling to get the moisture because you're not even moisturizing it the way it's supposed to be moisturized. Mm. So your hair will be choked. Then they're intertwined together. So when you're, when you're undoing, there will be quite some serious breakage when you're removing that. Mm -hmm. To avoid that, as you have this, it's good for you to keep moisturizing. Mm -hmm. And we have manufacturers who do uh, braid sprays, you know, when you, when you use the synthetic fibers, there's some sprays you can use yeah. so that you can replenish. The moisture that is supposed to be pulled from your hair, it will be pulling out from the product. Mm -hmm. So people with this, if you don't have that, use Levin. But Levin is not very good because it has a lot of water, so it can, it can make them undo, you know. Oh. They are faster than the intended duration. So the braid spray becomes better. So when you have this, you should be putting some products to protect your hair when mm. you remove. So the best the dreads are spray. the natural dreads. Your mm. own dreads, they are the best. Okay, they're but the, the natural dreads, are, uh, okay, nowadays I think they can be removed. They, are actually, they can be undone. Actually, I work with the people with, with the dreads. They have alopecia. They cut the hair. They keep the hair. When the alopecia, we're able to hit it and the hair starts to grow, they retouch. <laughs> and they go dread, like today, tomorrow, uh, dread, the dreads are there. <laughs> <Team> dreads, <laughs> yeah. then you Everything is possible baby. in this Kenya today. <laughs> okay. So for the solution for people uh, that are in team... <laughs> team natural. Uh, not natural, <laughs> because the natural ones are safe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for the artificial ones, yes. uh, which are most likely to be synthetic, right? Yes, what yes, they need yes, to yes. do is use um, the sprays. Yes, the sprays. And uh, moisturize. And moisturize and sheen sprays. And sheen need to keep shining all the time because yeah, when African in. is shining it means the sun is hitting the hair and being deflected off there's no absorption of UV yeah. so our hair needs to have some oil at any point especially if you're out there mm -hmm. so uh, the sprays moisturizing sprays and then sheen sprays to keep the hair protected okay there's something else to avoid with the people with the dread drugs will be will be tension I'm seeing people with the dreads, but they are attracting traction alopecia. Mm. Yes, they are doing dreads, which is safe, but how it's done, it, there's too much tension, Pull especially in. during during styling. Mm. Those guys are really putting a lot of tension to a point where you find the hairs are really pulled, it's like a mirror, the scalp is like a mirror because of the stretching in different directions. Mm. And then the follicles, sometimes you find they have pass. Mm. And the moment you see pass in a follicle, my friend, that yes. is not, that's the worst you can have. Oh, wow. To remove that infection, that is, uh, that is bacterial infection. Mm -hmm. To remove bacterial infection in the follicle is that even medically today, it's not easy to remove. Wow. It's not. It's, it can be that crazy. It so, can be that crazy. Ukienda salon, usivutu when you were to look good. I think there's a day I, I went for to a different hair tech 
my hair was full so much I had to go back the next day to have them and do it because it was you can't too even stressful. Sleep. <laughs> you can't even sleep and it's yeah. so uncomfortable. Yeah. Wonderful. And alopecia, just yes. a, as a way of closing, mm -hmm. and the effects of alopecia that you have seen, what yes. does it do to people emotionally? Because, uh, when, uh, you know, doing my research, I understood that some people need support and all that. Yeah. But when you look at it mm -hmm. from our side, especially if you're not affected, then it's mm, just, it's just, just hair loss. You don't have hair. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell us about that. No, it is. And actually, brief. if hair loss is not demeaning, nobody can go for a solution. People come because of what yeah. they go through. Mm -hmm. You get it? Eh? And especially people in careers. There's, you see, people who are not in careers, like people who are out there, hustlers, they just informal put caps. They're informal well. business. They just put caps and stuff, you know? But you see, uh, career people, they are limited. That's what they cannot do. And that's what you find when they have alopecia, they're always on wigs. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, women in wigs, if there's something they pray, the day they put that wig down. <laughs> that it's thing done, tiresome. I can tell you. And the first thing they get in the house they remove is not even the hard bag, the, <laughs> the wig. wig. That thing is tiring. Uh, you I get can, it? Can relate, yeah. And actually, if you can listen to the stories behind the hair losses, they are very touching. And that's why even trichologists, they must have a lot of empathy. And can tell you, I've worked with the trichologists, I've seen how they work. People are like, you know, this is a client, you know, do it, do it, do it. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. It's more than a sick person. This person is not sick, but emotionally, they are more than sick. Because mm -hmm. when you're sick, you know I'm sick. I'm paining here and my problem is this. So they deal with it. Hair loss, they don't even know how it came. They don't know what it is. The hair is going, nobody is explaining anything. So emotionally, they are very stressed. And that's why if, if I'm to do consultation, I'll book you for two hours. Mm. We'll talk. Because okay. I have now to you come. I have to release those 